Is China a deep state target? And if so, are the ones targeting them enemies of humanity? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. In the recent excitement concerning American biological laboratories in Ukraine, with few Americans realize that China is interested. And the reason for that interest is that China itself might be a target of biological warfare. Or if they are not a target, they fear they might be. Do their fears have a good foundation? If so, what might that foundation be? And more to the point, what would that imply for the rest of humanity? Before I at least try to answer those questions, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there. Especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which uh, quotes Klaus Schwab saying, We have ways. We have ways. And today I want to talk about one such way that has implications for everyone. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the US dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, I talked to you about biological weapons development laboratories in Ukraine not too long ago, but earlier I wrote about it on Conservative News and Views before I even thought of doing these videos, which means uh, almost a year ago. On March 7, 2022, I compiled a collection of tweets and videos, each of which essentially accused the United States government of funding, directing, and staffing biological weapons development laboratories in Ukraine. But the month before, Twitter, a Twitter user War Clandestine published his own thread along that line on the very day the Russians started to invade. I have a link in the description to the anchor tweet for that thread. He said some very frightening things and Twitter suspended his account almost at once. But, of course, they weren't the only platform. Those rumors, of course, abounded everywhere else. Many things happened in the ensuing year, including Elon Musk buying out Twitter, firing its executive echelon, and, the key, restoring many accounts, including that of War Clandestine and that of Kanako of the Great, who dropped a thread pretty much confirming everything I wrote, wrote before about those labs, and also saying where they came from. To review, those originally were Soviet Army facilities, only instead of destroying them, the deep state, hiding behind the American flag, set those labs up for their own purposes. And about this time, the Chinese balloon story broke. I covered that last Sunday, of course. In that light, War Clandestine dropped a thread telling a story no one thought about, which is, China wanted to know, as far back as March 25, 2022, what about American biological laboratories in Ukraine? And not in Ukraine only, but elsewhere in the world. I have a link in the description to a video from CCTV, the Chinese TV network, showing Chinese Defense Ministry spokesman Wu Chan, that's spelled Q-I-A-N, putting it out there that the Americans had biological research labs in Ukraine and demanding an explanation, not only of why those labs were located there, but also what was going on in them. War Clandestine left a six-tweet thread of his own, embedding that video in one of the tweets. I have links in the description to the even numbers. And here is the text, which I have botherized slightly. Quote, Since the public are on the topic of China, let's share a video from the Ministry of National Defense 
from the PRC on March 25, 2022. Americans are largely unaware that China has also been demanding for investigations into the U.S. biological activity in Ukraine and abroad. Wu Chan elaborates on the PRC's stance on U.S. military involvement in the biolabs in Ukraine, as well as the many locations of U.S. overseas biolabs that saw outbreaks of rare infectious diseases. Chinese military are demanding answers. <coughs> so for those wondering why China would militaristically escalate against the United States, well, they are openly demanding for clarifications as to why dangerous pathogens are leaking from U.S. labs worldwide. They are openly asking for transparency. To be clear, I'm not insinuating that the Chinese are to be trusted. I'm pointing out that they are already exuding militaristic posture towards the U.S. And it's allegedly to do with the U.S. biological malfeasance in Ukraine. Whether it's true or not, Russia and China are very angry. The crazy part is 99.99% of the U.S. population have no idea that China and Russia made these allegations. Meanwhile, U.S. biological malfeasance has been the main conversation of the international diplomatic community since March 2022. So for those who are concerned that this could be an escalation into World War III, I've got news for you. We are, already, we are already in World War III. Russia, China, and the rest of the world have been under biological taxes since December 2019 and possibly before then. Eventually, they will strike back. End of threat. Now, that last allegation was sensational enough. A user named Daniel Dersch engaged war clandestine in as hot a debate as Twitter ever sees. I have links in the description to four tweets of their thread. Mr. Dersh says, sure, let's let them investigate as soon as they open up their own country for investigation. War clandestine uh, tells him, well, they offer preci precisely that. Dersh disputes him on that, and I'm sad to say that the argument degenerated into uh, what we call argumentum ad hominem, argument directed toward the, toward the other person not to the points he's making. Still, War Clandestine said China made a formal presentation to the UN including investigations into all five, all five permanent members of the Security Council, which are the USA, the UK, France, Russia, and China. Dirks snidely observed that none of the other four besides China would possibly agree to that, so another user asked I asked him to lay out his own proof as carefully as War Clandestine had, done, had laid out his. Dersh protests that War Clandestine just said Russia and China were under biological attack and offered no proof. Whereupon War Clandestine asked Dersh what planet he'd been living on. Now, let's remember how the Security Council works. All five of these permanent members would have, would have had to agree to any such investigation, just as they must do to pass any Security Council resolution. Well, three days later, another user asked War Clandestine whether he had researched, uh, researched possible biological weapons development laboratories in two other places. These were the country of Georgia, formerly Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic, and Taiwan. War Clandestine responded that the American biolab presence on Taiwan might be worse than that in Ukraine. Accordingly, he dropped a 10-tweet thread that has many more links and spoke directly to the allegation that China might be under a biological warfare attack or at least the direct target of some nasty biological weapons research and development happening right on Taiwan itself. I know that's hard to swallow, but I've left the links to the even number of tweets in that thread so you can click through and get all the information he presented. And as I always do, I'm going to read you his text. So, 
In answer to that user's questions, he said, quote, Interestingly enough, the U.S. biological presence in Taiwan might be worse than Ukraine. According to the National Institutes of Health, there are 1,251 biolabs in Taiwan, 262 of which are private, including a BSL-4, that's Biosafety Level 4 lab in Taipei, which notoriously saw an outbreak of the virus that shall remain nameless. If the Chinese military are true in their displeasure in the U.S. biological presence in Ukraine, <coughs> surely the U.S. biological presence in Taiwan is a main factor in their desire to reclaim Taiwan from U.S. deep state proxy activity. Does everyone remember the infamous lab mouse infected with the virus that shall remain nameless that bit a scientist and caused an outbreak of that virus? out of the BSL-4 lab in Taiwan. That happened in December 10th, 2021. This one didn't get much coverage in the Western mainstream media. I wonder why. And what was Pelosi doing in Taiwan that caused such a massive response from China and threats of militaristic retaliation? Given the Chinese military's public and formal grievances for U.S. biological malfeasance, we have to consider their connection. Trump had been telling us since before the Olympic Games that China was looking to move into Taiwan. Trump has hinted many times that Ukraine and Taiwan are, under, are uh, similar situations to their respective parent countries. Looks like Taiwan may be a deep state proxy as well. Then when you think in terms of militaristic biological applications, Ukraine and Taiwan have the two most important things in common. Ukraine was formerly a part of the Soviet Union, which is now the Russian Federation, and Taiwan was formerly a part of China, meaning the citizens still have the same DNA as their parent countries. Why is this important? Because the advancements in U.S. micro and nanobiology allow for ge genome-specific biological weapons that can target entire nationalities. This is not conspiracy theory. I have a link to an interview in which Representative Jason Crow, Democrat from Colorado, is speaking on this U.S. biological technology. Given the Chinese military displeasure and U.S. biological research, with U.S. biological research and capabilities, the entire country of China is at risk of directed biological warfare, so long as the U.S. has a biological foothold in Taiwan, with access to historically Chinese DNA. Same goes for Ukraine vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Russia and China don't want the U.S. to have biolabs in former Russia, Russian and Chinese territory, because the populace possesses DNA that can be used to quite literally wipe out their entire civilizations, as they are homogeneous societies. This is why Russia and China are so angry. We always thought it would be the nuclear arms race that separated the world pow powers. We always thought World War III was going to be nuclear. Turns out, the real arms race going on behind the scenes was a biological arms race. Our DNA is the key, and humanity is in great peril. End of threat. Well, let me tell you, the reactions to that threat clearly show that many users took the point at once. Before I share that reaction, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals, 
Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy to your future. As I was about to say, the reactions were equal parts outraged and frightened. I have links in the description to 10 tweets, each giving a particular reaction. One user uh, wanted to know how many level 4 labs can a country justify they have. Canada has only one, but the USA has hundreds all over the world. Others pointed out, some interesting things, like Katie Hobbs, the new governor of Arizona, reporting income from Taiwan. And here, a patent application, sealed until September 3rd, 2020, but filed as long ago as 2015. And for what? For system and method for testing for the virus that shall remain nameless. Go follow the link, the one from, one from Superstar 59979582 and see for yourselves. On and on and on. Uh, we see a photo of Nancy Pelosi at a ceremonial signing of something called the Chips and Science Act. Another showing video by a Chinese official, maybe it's Wu Chan, it looks like him anyway, pointing out that the United States has 336 labs in 30 countries, including 26 labs in Ukraine alone. Another user asks, whether maybe the USA is no longer on the side of justice. Speaking of which, the next user says that we stand in violation of our own laws. Title 22, United States Code, Section 5605, and the Chemical and Biological Weapons Committee of the International Red Cross. Someone else points out what might drive someone to take, what might drive someone to take a job in one of those labs a mountain of student debt, and the offer of an $80,000 annual salary and a 403B plan. Now, a 403B plan is the university faculty and administrative equivalent of a 401K plan in the corporate world. And, oh yes, listen to this, quote, not only that, but TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, makes the world's most advanced chips for the biggest tech companies, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Apple, on and on and on. They flex to do immunizations awfully quick, creating chip shortages. One island to rule them all, close quote. How about that? A little J.R.R. Tolkien into the bargain. If you follow the link, you'll see a reply saying that that company just exited Taiwan and move their main headquarters to, drum roll please, Arizona. Now could that be the connection to Governor Hobbs? And finally, someone observes that this is why Xi Jinping has a plan to invade Taiwan and maybe for the same reason Vladimir Putin went into Ukraine. And now, my analysis. War clandestine offers no definite proof, definitive proof. And perhaps no one could, but he does offer a possibility that one cannot in good conscience ignore. Furthermore, he suggests that China leadership has, have great fear, fear that someone is trying to wipe out their entire population. A homogeneous population having a common generic heritage also has a common vulnerability. Indeed, Frank Ulicker of the Max Planck Institute show in October 2020 that a heterogeneous population can become immune far more quickly than can a homogeneous one. This fact alone lends credence to the fears in China that their homogeneous population might sooner get wiped out than become immune. The key to the survival of a population is driving the virus to mutate to a less virulent form before it kills everyone. A homogeneous population will require more infections to achieve population or herd immunity. But a, and a virus tailor made for a particular ethnic type might indeed kill faster than it can mutate. 
That's why the Russians and the Chinese do not want such laboratories on their borders. But as we have seen, the Ukrainians let the Americans, or rather elements of the deep state, take over the biological warfare laboratories left over from the communist era. They would have done better to destroy them or insist on their destruction. So when a certain user observed that genetic diversity in a population might be a way to hedge one's bets and make sure that the only thing that could wipe you out would wipe out the whole planet and that someone has been making decisions along that line of reasoning, maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, but maybe he might be correct. So what does that, well, so what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. Americans cannot ignore the possibility that a dangerous cabal is using Americans for some truly nefarious ends. This cabal leveraged American fears of the communist movement that held sway in Russia and still holds sway in China. Perhaps they are also leveraging critical race theory to whip up resentment against those target populations, though that might be more effective against the Russians than against the Chinese. War clandestine seems to fear retaliation by Russia and or China. Well, I believe Russia is far more capable of such retaliation than China ever could be. Russia has, simply put, better weapons. They are the, I mean the, best shipwrights for submarines and the weapons they carry. They've got a new cruise torpedo, for lack of a better term, that they call Poseidon. That thing can travel submerged to a point just offshore and then leap out of the water and strike inland with a nuclear warhead. Nobody would even evaluate it as a threat until it was all over. Chinese and American forces, in contrast, would be evenly matched, but Americans should fear the, the kind of people who would tailor a virus to wipe out a race or nationality. The very mindset that would contemplate such a project is fearsome enough. If anyone has the dark soul to run that kind of project, what other kind of project might they run? Understand, therefore, that cabal are not your friends. Whether, they, whether the Chinese are or could be anyone's friends with their own is almost irrelevant. What's relevant is that the denizens of Davos might have found yet another way to pose a positive menace to the rest of humanity. Links to the description of the article, to the start of War Clandestine's first ever thread on biolabs in Ukraine, to the video showing Wu Chan's public call for an investigation, to War Clandestine's first China thread, to the debate over it, to his the second China thread, to the reaction to that, to the tweet giving the thought about a genetically diverse population, to my Declaration of Truth Twitter account, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the Austin CNAV store and to rsilverlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. And on the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to my new China playlist, the Wu Chan video, and my video about the Ukraine lab situation. This is Terry A. Hurlman delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.